This question deals with a 32-year-old male hospitalized with multiple fractures and internal bleeding following a motor vehicle accident. He successfully resuscitated but develops oliguria on the second day of hospitalization. Renal biopsy findings are shown on the slide below. If the patient survives long enough, he is most likely to experience which of the following. So first of all, he got into an accident and he had a lot of bleeding. And the second day of hospitalization, he developed oliguria. Now renal biopsy is shown. What do we see in renal biopsy? Honestly, in biopsy, I can see bleeding. That's really all I can see. There's a lot of bleeding. So I would say internal bleeding on biopsy. So because he also got into an accident which confirms my theory about internal bleeding. Okay, so now they're saying if the patient survives long enough, he's most likely to experience which of the following. So what can we see if he survives long enough? So anytime I see oliguria, okay, the first thing that comes to my mind is ATN, acute tubular necrosis. And the more reason I think this is ATN is because there is also internal bleeding. The internal bleeding is responsible for, um, you know, damage of the epithelium of the kidney. Okay, some of the damage is going to be reversible. Some of the damage is going to be irreversible. Okay, and uh, depending on whether it's reversible or irreversible, we're going to have progression after recovery, or maybe the patient might not recover and the patient might die. So, but point is, whenever we see oliguria, we should think of ATN. And if the patient survives, then the patient should have normal kidney. Okay? So the question says, if the patient survives, what can we see? I would expect to see normal kidney. More specifically, I would expect to see re-epithelization of kidney. I would expect to see re-epithelization of kidney. So now let's see if my answer choices correspond to what I have thought about. The choices say, says A, segmental glomerulosclerosis. That doesn't seem like glomerulosclerosis has nothing to do with ATN, so A is not my answer. Diffuse mesangial sclerosis. Again, this is not my answer e either. There is no sclerosis in ATN. Glomerular epithelial proliferation. Okay, so this option might seem very convincing. But in ATN, the problem is in the tubules, not in the glomerulus, okay? So this is very also important to remember that we're going to have problem with the tubules and not glomerulus. So I will rule that out also. D, tubular re-epithelization. That's it. It just matches what I told you before. So D is my desired answer. But sometimes you can have a better option, so we'll always look at all the options and choice E says scarring and atrophy of the medulla I mean that's convincing but if he survives he's probably going to have tubular epithelization then scarring so my desired answer in this case is going to be D so now let's talk about uh, what are the different stages of ATN ATN really has three stages the first stage is called the initiation stage at the initiation stage is where the original insult happens. Okay. Original insult happens at the initi initiation stage. In this case, the original insult what was ischemia. And then we have the maintenance phase. The maintenance phase usually lasts one to two weeks. Okay. This is the phase where we are going to see oliguria. And this oliguria is going to be maintained for one to two weeks. And that's why it's called the maintenance phase because it there's oliguria and it remains in its oliguric phase. Now, this phase is kind of important. If you do a renal biopsy uh, and do a light microscopy, you will be able to see things at this phase, So which we also see in this picture. 
So I'll be talking about that a little bit. So the only thing that you really need to do is light microscopy. You really don't need electron microscopy for looking at ATN. Now on light microscopy, you're going to see a um, couple of things. First of all, you're going to see something called granular casts. Okay, You're going to see granular casts on light microscopy. Another thing you're going to see is you're going to see flattening flattening of the renal tubules. Okay. That is also going to be seen. Flattening or wearing away of the renal tubules. And there is also going to be wearing away, wearing away of basement membrane. That is also going to be seen. Okay. So these are the things you're going to see in the oliguric phase. And the third phase is going to be the recovery phase. Now before we go on, to go on to the recovery phase, let's see if we can see certain things that we talked about here in this picture. First of all, there's going to be flattening of the renal tubule. So the tubules are going to be bigger. As you can see that this tubule is quite big. These are quite big tubules. They look bigger than normal. Like this one seems to be kind of normal, but these ones seems to be a lot bigger, right? There is also going to be flattening of the renal tubules and wearing away of the basement membrane. So you can see how the basement membrane or the epithelium is kind of gone. So th there is going to be wearing away of the basement membrane. You should also be able to see granular casts. Um, maybe this is a granu granular cast. I'm not so sure, but you should be in a in a bigger or a bi in a bigger magnified picture you should be able to see granular casts as well in the oliguric phase or the maintenance phase last of all we have the recovery phase and in the recovery phase what we're going to see is so i'm going to put recovery here we are going to see normalization of gfr so GFR is going to start to become normal, normalization of the GFR. And you know, when that happens, there is also going to be polyuria. Because you were not peeing before, now you're peeing too much. Okay, polyuria. There is also going to, we're also going to see complete restoration of renal function. We're going to see uh, re-epithelization. So complete restoration. There is going to be re epithelization in the recovery phase. One more thing that I kind of forgot to mention earlier is that in the oliguric phase, there is going to be hyperkalemia okay, and metabolic acidosis, causing an anion gap during the oliguric phase. But in the maintenance phase, this hyperkalemia is going to become hypokalemia. It makes sense why there's going to be hyperkalemia in the oliguric phase. That's because we are just not peeing enough. And so we're keeping those potassium inside the body. And in the recovery phase, because of the polyuria, we're peeing too much, uh, getting rid of some of the potassium that we need, causing us hypokalemia. So this is also a very, very important point to remember. So that's what happens in the recovery phase. But what about instances where the patient might not recover? Well, how do we know? If the patient has multi-organ failure, in that case, the chances of recovery is not as good. And there could, there could be um, you know, renal tissue impaired and you might not see recovery if there is multi-organ dysfunction. So that's the only point where you will have to think that, okay, recovery might not happen. Other than that, this is my interpretation of ATN.